Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 27 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm not coming at you from New Hampshire. I'm in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I had to think about Philadelphia, that. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where the heck am I? <laughs> uh, and I am at my usual location here in Edinburgh, Scotland. Hello. How are you Hi, doing, everybody? sweetie? I'm doing well, and I hope all our listeners are doing well, too. Thanks for joining us for our little crafty chat, knitting and crocheting. And mostly chatting. Well, yeah, L- lots of chatting, <laughs> but <laughs> this is a knitting and crochet podcast, we said. <laughs> a special thank you to Patty Crochets. She said hello to us on Ravelry, mm-hmm. and um, she says she's a longtime listener. She's the one, right, that said that? Yeah, that, mm-hmm. right? So thanks uh-huh. for saying hi. It's it's good to hi, be Patty. able to actually say hi to our listeners like that. So thanks a lot for popping by the Ravelry group to do that. Yes, thank you so very much. What are we doing for BuzzFeed? We're doing this color quiz will reveal if you're an optimist, pessimist, or a realist. What did you get, sweetie? I got you're an optimist. It's not that you never feel down. It's that it's always short-lived and you always find a reason to bounce. You operate under the assumption that everything will be fine and that for the most part, everyone is well-meaning and kind, which is basically just a description of what an optimist is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I didn't get the same thing as you this time around. I got you're a realist. Okay. You as long as you always... didn't get pessimist. <laughs> What's that? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> You are always one who hopes for the best but prepares for the worst. You always take everything into account and make careful, planned decisions. You believe that if you can plan for it, you should. Hmm, I think that uh, that probably describes me because I I do like to prepare for the worst. (laughs) Do you think I'm an optimist? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Hmm. I don't think I'm like so much an optimist that everyone you're not like a super like... uber optimist but i think for the most part you are <laughs> i think what are, what did you what were the colors you picked so i picked yellow as my primary color which definitely mm-hmm. seems like an optimistic color mm-hmm. and green as my secondary color uh-huh what did you pick for your primary and secondary colors um blue and purple i feel what like pink uh, for pick a shade of pink, I went for the duskiest. I went for the brightest. Mm. Do you think that the optimist colors are the bright colors and the realist colors? Mm, maybe not. Because I picked the duskiest pink, the bright, mm-hmm. the most, the darkest saturated blue, the middle mm-hmm. green, and then the mustardiest yellow. Hmm. So. I picked the blue for the primary, the purple for secondary, the bright pink, the medium blue for the blue, um, the lightest green for green, the palest yellow, purple for pastel, and um, pink for neon, and the lightest gray. Mm. So I was all over the place. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, Who who can fathom the very scientific (laughs) methods of this very scientific BuzzFeed quiz? Yes, very scientific. (laughs) Well, let's move on to our fiber content. Sure. Do you have any whips? I do. So in a not very exciting turn of events, I have the same exact whips as last time. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, So I'm still working on the tank top. With the cotton ribbon yarn, which is going to be my Rome tank top, because hopefully I'll be done with it for Rome, for my trip to Rome, which is in less than a month now. And I've literally done nothing since we've last recorded. Partially you because... Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't take it with you over the weekend? No, I took I took my other whip with me um, this past weekend. So I didn't bring that one. And I think I'm also starting to get intimidated by trying to do the straps. And doing mm-hmm. like the increase and decrease, and if it's called match up, and how I'm gonna get it together. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I just have that last hurdle to go over, but okay. the due date I'm being sure you... Rome. Uh, uh, but I'm I... sure you will figure it out. <laughs> I'm also planning on submitting it to Faye's summer top cow. Oh, nice. Faye of the 
crochet circle podcast and in her rule specifically she said that you're allowed to submit whips even if you're basically nearly finished with it she she said she doesn't (laughs) care so i can submit it and then so the other whip i have which is the same as last time and is the one that i've been mostly concentrating my efforts on rather than the tank top is my pleated Mm -hmm. cardigan so last we spoke i think i was still working on maybe the first side of the front so i've since finished the whole body part so Very that's the nice. back bits which includes the the pleats, pleated back the pleat. yep it's on the I back i saw that on instagram yeah. that looks very sharp mm. yeah it was it was pretty uh nifty the way you do the sort of decrease to begin with and then the increases and you create the extra fabric mm-hmm. to recreate mm-hmm. the pleat and um, and then there's also just the collar has a slightly different stitch than the rest of the bit, the rest of the cardigan. So I got the collar done, and I've only just, 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 just started on one of the first sleeve. Oh, nice. So I worked on that mostly on the car trip to the Isle of Mull. Uh-huh. Um, so I got a few hours of work in then. Um, it's looking good, I think. I'm, I'm finding it interesting because I was listening to Faye's latest um her latest episode where she she does her segment old dog new tricks where she talks about some sort of educational informative Mm -hmm. sort of yeah content and she was saying how she belongs to various crochet groups and people keep asking about how you measure the garments for when you're making it based off of the blocked or unblocked um yeah Oh, so, uh uh-huh. Yeah, I was like, oh, well, I asked that, so maybe (laughs) I'm one of those people. And so she said that generally she she would say that the gauge that you're given at the beginning of a pattern, unless it says otherwise, would be from the unblocked. Oh, okay. But I don't know. I I think I... But but yarn's all blocked differently. Like... Yeah. I don't know how that would... I don't know. Well, there's no way I could have gotten this gauge without considering blocking it. Yeah, without blocking it. So, Uh of course, also because I'm quite sure that sort of changes things, I feel like. I think if I if I carried on so I think ultimately my unblocked measurements are actually shorter for the length than what it says in the pattern. Because I've mm-hmm. thought, well, I'm going to block it and stretch it taller so it'll reach those measurements. Mm-hmm. But I think even if that's not what I was meant to do, because I'm short, it doesn't really matter because I probably need a slightly shorter garment than what the pattern actually calls for, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, when I was trying to figure out where I wanted to put the pleats in the back, obviously that should be like right around your waist because it's mm-hmm. right where you go narrow. So kind of try to do that all in a sort of roundabout. I've put it on and stretched it a bit and tried to decide <laughs> where things lay. Um, but I thought, so I, I was looking at some of the other people's projects for this. And there was one Ravelry user, Boom C Bean. And she did the same thing as me where she did the wrong stitch. Where oh, she no. did it so it looked more <laughs> like a granny. And if uh-huh. I had just seen her notes before I started, I would have <laughs> known and not had to rip out half of my work. And then oh well, another thing that I was having issues with was some of the stitch counts. So when I was doing the first row, which sort of um, created the armhole, so closed it up to make the armhole, I was two stitches off. I just couldn't, I kept adding it up. You know, it said, because you had to do a certain amount, which was half of the front, and then a certain amount under the arm. And then a certain amount across the back Mm -hmm. and then repeat again, the same amount under the arm, the same amount Mm -hmm. across the half of the front. And I added all those numbers together and none of them were adding up for any of the different sizes. They were all two stitches short. So I just, I kept reading it. I was like, maybe there's a sneaky extra stitch under the arm that (laughs) I'm just reading the pattern wrong. Like the repeat Uh 
incorrectly. You, yeah, uh-huh. And I, I just couldn't figure it out. And Did I, anybody else have the same problem? I think one check? other person did as well. And I almost considered just adding the extra stitch under the arm anyway. But I think I, I did I ended up not doing that, which just changed how I had to do the pleats because there was just one less stitch on each half. But mm-hmm. even even then, like the the pattern, it, it made sense ultimately, but I had to map it out on a grid just mm. to get it in my head because the the pattern, the stitch pattern, it's a um, what it, what, paired treble crochets. So two two treble crochets, well, UK treble crochets, US double crochets. Mm-hmm. So two double crochets count as one stitch, one paired okay stitch so for the most part that's how it's counted you know if this Mm -hmm. row is 20 stitches it's actually 40 double crochets Mm -hmm. but it's Mm -hmm. 20 paired and when you're doing increases and decreases for the pleats figuring out for the first row she switches between sometimes referring to to the stitch count as a pair and as the mm-hmm. individual double crochets. So oh. when she said, you know, full, you know, do this for four stitches and then put a place a stitch marker and then another four stitches, place a stitch marker. She doesn't mean four paired stitches. She just means four, four. double crochets. But uh-huh. in almost every other instance, she's when she says that, she means so, the paired stitches. Uh, do you know that for sure? Mm, no, but it, that it worked. It worked out mathematically, oh, um, I see. and it creates the the pleats that seem to be the right size. I think if you had doubled it, uh-huh. the pleats would have been it a lot been bigger, and, it, and yeah, it would yeah. have cinched it in even more. Yeah, um, and the math I don't think would have worked out as well. At least I I, I think, because I, I guess the other thing is maybe my pleats are too far apart. If I, I I can't even wrap my head around how <laughs> how this is all done. I mean, with crochet. So. Yeah. Well. <laughs> anyway, so I I had to do that. So if if anyone else makes this this card again, I think someone was mentioned it in the Instagram comments that they wanted to make it. If anyone else makes it, when you get to those pleated parts, let me know if you also are finding this to be a bit weird or if it's just me. Mm. Um, I don't think it's just you. <laughs> But yeah, so that that's my my whips. Those are your two whips. <laughs> well, um, I still have my fiddled head mints, but I haven't been working on that. Um, I did start a new sweater. Um, the sock arms by Steph- Stephanie Lodvin of Telly B- Telly B Knits. It's a sweater. It's a fingering white sweater where the the body is one color and the sleeves you use self-striping yarn but Uh, the way the way she designed it i I think there's short rows up top so the um the the self-striping is not interrupted or something that so they they match i don't know it's really cute when i originally bought the pattern last year i was so excited i had bought the yarn and everything and then (laughs) After I took a good look at it, it's like, oh crap, it's bottom up. I I can't remember the last time I knitted a bottom up sweater, and I was like, ah. So I just like threw it threw it aside. I didn't want to look at it. <laughs> a little tantrum. <laughs> yeah. So so I kind of forgot about it, and then I wanted to uh, knit the Engie sweater that I uh, mentioned last time with the pink yarn that I got at Edinburgh, and uh-huh. it's a color worked yoke so I had to I had to get the rest of the colors which I did and then I had to do the the swatch with the color work Uh um it was off by a lot and I was so frustrated with it and I knew this my trip you know to to Philadelphia was coming up I was thinking you know what I'm not going to be able to work on something color work when I'm out there so I set that aside and I, I dug in my um, stash of stuff and I found my sock arms all ready to go in a bag with the pattern and the, the, the uh, yarns. And um, 
Yeah, it's going it's going by swimmingly. It's 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 bottom up. So the the bottom cast on there's like 260 stitches or something like that. And I like to do a uh like a stretchier cast on rather than the traditional um long tail cast on. It is a type of long tail cast on. So with a long tail cast on, you have to like figure out like how long your tail is. Uh-huh. And but why and you what start... is the tail used for? Well, because if you don't have enough, then you're going to run out before you you get to your 260 stitches. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh Uh-huh. So, um, and I'm, and my friend Paolo's like, how long do you do the tails? Like, I don't know. I just go like this. I just, you know, pull it out like a few times and go, ah, that looks right. (laughs) So I got lucky. Um, my, um, my tail was actually a decent sized tail. So, cause there, there's been sweaters where like the tail's like a little nub <laughs> because uh-huh. it's barely <laughs> enough yarn <laughs> for the last cast on stitch. Um, so anyway, so I cast that on and in the car yesterday, uh, we we're in the car for like almost six hours, about six hours. I did, what does that look like? About three inches. Uh-huh. So yeah. yeah, I did quite a bit. That's it, all it is is stocking it around, and around, and around, and around until you get to the waist shaping. So it's very easy knitting so at this point. If do you do the sleeves top down though? Uh, is that a dumb sleeves, question? You you pick up you pick it up. For, like, okay, you pick up the stitches. I, I think you know you know the 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 old adage: you read your pattern before you start. Yeah. <laughs> I obviously haven't read it through, <laughs> but. Uh-huh. But I did, I, well, I did read it through when I originally got it. So <laughs> a year ago, in my mind, in my mind I think it's, it's like you pick up stitches and you do short rows. Is that how you would normally do it in a top up, no, bottom up sweater? Most of the time, bottom up sweaters that I have done, they're so, they're, they're um, knit separately and then sewn together. I mean, this is just what I've done. Right. Yeah. It's like you knit, you knit the uh, from the bottom to the armpit, and then you separate for the the sleeves. Uh-huh. You know, the the, the front yeah. and the back. You separate uh-huh. it, and then you do just the front or just the back. Right. And then and then you sew up the the shoulders. Uh huh. And then now you have like a vest. So then yeah. you, you knit a, a sleeve to go into the hole into the and sleeve would hole. the sleeve also be knitted bottom up the way the torso was. Uh, or does it not matter? But yeah, most most likely it is. I don't think. It, yeah, most likely it is bottom. Is. Up. Yeah, because because you do the cuff first and then right. you right. Um, and it could be either flat or in the round. Mm. So I this this blue that I for the the body is like a like a bright turquoisey um blue, oh. and then the yarn for the arms it's over there and I can't reach it. It's it's a knit picks fleecy and it's called hopscotch. So it's like these pastel I basically Madeline said it looks like you're gonna make be making yourself a Jimbery sweater I'm like yeah sure whatever because <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of like Jimbery colors especially those things those striped sweaters that I used to make her wear when she was little <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm making myself an adult size Jimbery sweater and so that's my my main um whip this time around uh-huh. no- nothing to no, you know, no, nothing too complicated anyway. So another it's, it's what I, sweater. Yes, it's Just like it's what an... I need in my life right now. <laughs> something, something simple because that's, you know, sometimes life can be a little stressful. <laughs> so, you have any FOs? No, because potent the only fo potential i have are the two whips that i'm still working on oh, oh that you're still working <laughs> i have an fo in fact i was practically done with it uh when we last recorded i was only working on the the ribbing of my bubbly sweater yay. so i finished the bubbly sweater yay and i have not tried it on on the recipient who is with me right now but she's seen it <laughs> so she knows what she's getting it for either What's that? Approves of it. She approves of the She approved of it before when I was only working on, like, the when it only had one sleeve. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we tried it on her at that point, and she knows she's going to get it either for Christmas or birthday or whatever. <laughs> so, but after way, I finished it. not until it, December. <laughs> not until December. No, I, I didn't show it to her after it, it was an official FO. But I did post it on Instagram, 
and there's a, a video of Willet like rolling around with it. Yeah, like every awesome. time I try to take pictures of my knitting, he's there. It's like he's not there, and then I take out my knitting, and then he's there, and he's like <laughs> sniffing and rolling, and just like oh, all the yarn. I, don't, I wonder if he would do that with like acrylic yarn. Yeah, I was gonna I say like, that. what is it about that? Like, if you just laid out <laughs> like another a, like shirt a cotton thing. shirt. Yeah, she, he doesn't do that. But what if he just laid out a store bought wool sweater? Do you think he would do it? Oh, maybe it wouldn't smell like me. Yeah, I was gonna say like because you're touch. Yeah, yeah. You got to do an experiment. Yeah, I should. But he does that every single time, and like sometimes. <laughs> so a lot of times, like I, when I do post pictures, they're like, "Well, there's his, you know, his head is right there, or his leg is because I just pushed him off and mm-hmm. and took a picture real quick." Because usually he's like rolling on it. I've noticed that then- there's always like a cat <laughs> cameo in your. <laughs> photos yeah so um i push him off and then like get him away and then take a picture as, as you know as, as quickly as i can before he jumps in again so smooth it out because you know he's been rolling around in it <sighs> but it makes life interesting he's a cutie he's my cutie <laughs> he is cutie big dumb baby uh, so that is the only fo i have That's it's a right. pretty big fo though yeah no you've been working on it for ages well um, not ages but a while since when yeah well, when did i start working i um i could look back on ravelry but... you need to start going cow hunting i feel like tile yeah. hunting cow. cow cow hunting yeah knit along what do you mean like Why? you know you, you don't really participate in that many knit alongs and stuff but you just you just need to find the ones that have that you can just happen to submit <laughs> something to i was just thinking clarissa beth is really good at that like uh-huh. she'll have one thing that she was already making but she she suddenly figured out oh i could i can submit to three different cows <laughs> uh yeah maybe i should do that um. <laughs> but speaking of cows Yes! Cow cow! Not just Yay, a cow. Cow cow. cow, cow. It's, a cow, cow. It's, a, it's twice cr- the fun. Twice the du- fun. Double the fu- was it double the fun? Double the, was that double mint commercial? From, oh, never I, mind. I don't know. <laughs> you weren't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, cow cow will begin on June 15th. So you have a few days to uh, sit and wait and anticipate and be on the edge of your seat. So just, you can find the general rules on the Ravelry group. I'll, I'll start a thread for the chatter. Um, I feel like this one, it's a bit, it's a bit different with the chatter because there's not really a real theme. It's just uh-huh. crocheters versus knitters. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. So are we allowing uh, things that we started prior to June 15th? Yeah. So I think we're just gonna, you know trust our listeners to sort of gauge it themselves uh we're not going to be quite as lenient as Faye, so if it's <laughs> basically done then it probably doesn't count but you know if, if you're around halfway then sure that that you can count that uh-huh. um we'll just trust everybody to use their best judgment uh-huh. and so i mentioned last time that we were going to have a point system and i have developed the point system i've actually already posted some of the rules on our website, which is just kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. It's just a blog post about the CalCal 2018, and it's got the date, so June 15th to June 31st, and then it's got the points chart. So mm-hmm. I can just run through it real quick, just so you can have a sense of what's what. And we developed this very non-scientifically, and it's... <laughs> very scientifically. <laughs> no, I said non-scientifically. Oh, non? Yeah. Okay, yes, I'm admitting, I'm admitting to my lack of real research on this. I, I did a little bit of research. I, I kind of, okay. I looked it's at... It's all for the, fun anyway. Yeah, it's all for fun. So small items, which are less than 250 yards, for example, washcloths or little stuffies, are, are smaller items at one point. You could get two points for um, small items, which are less than 500 yards, so maybe a bag or a big, slightly bigger stuffy. Hats and cows are also two points. Mittens are three points. Scarves and shawls, which are less than 500 yards, three points. Um, there's some other things. Uh, larger uh, scarves and shawls could be up to five points. And blankets, sweaters, and cardigans would be up to ten points. So I've, I've not listed everything, but that's a few things. And then... Let's see if I can finish my sweater. I'm not... <laughs> Oh, your sock figuring weight sweater. I don't think it's gonna happen. 
<laughs> by by August thirty first. Uh, well, you well, said so if, we it's, if it's a simple one, you can maybe just power through. Anyway, so uh, the one thing that I've not, I'll need to add to that post, and is we're we've added another little asterisk rule thingy to the points chart, which was actually suggested to us by Loophole Stacy on the Ravelry group. She suggested that we add a sort of bonus point for things that have some sort of extra complexity. So it'll just be a small little one point of bonus if your project has... What about has... bonus points for making a fingering weight sweater versus a worsted weight sweater? <laughs> Never mind. Forget it. I'm not <laughs> eligible for the prizes anyway, so what does it matter? <laughs> um, so yeah, one point for... Bonus point for complexity. So something like... Uh, stranded color work or cables or lace and I think we'll also sort of leave that up to um, our participants and our listeners own judgment but my sense of it is that something like stranded color work you might get the bonus point for knitting or crocheting but something like lace lace work unless it's really complicated lace work and the really fine yarn for crocheting that might get you a bonus point but if it's just regular crochet lacy ishness with regular uh, you know standard weight yarn that might not get you the bonus point just because i feel like crocheting lace pattern is not as difficult as knitting lace i feel like it's if almost, you say so <laughs> i don't know I, I feel like it's almost it's almost a part of crochets that you know, you can do lace really easily, like lacy open stitches yeah, really easily. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's okay. the nature of crochet. Okay, basically knitters, let's let's do some lace work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so that that's that's how it's gonna go, um, and I think also we will and since we're talking about the cow cow, last episode we. we gave a shout out or call out for people to submit any sorts of um an audio clip or an email or anything to tell us about yourselves and your knitting or crocheting habits um in honor of the cow cow for our mailbag segment so this will be our first official mailbag segment because your friend paula was sort of like our beta test mailbag <laughs> segment <laughs> beta so this test. is our, our first one anyway. um so we've had a, a few diff- a couple of submissions, so we're just going to share the one today. So this comes from Nicola, who both you and I have met at EYF yep. this past year. And I met Nicola EYF last, last, last year. 2017. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And then I met her this year, 2018. Mm-hmm. She is very lovely and I love her accent. <laughs> and now everyone else can <laughs> listen to her accent right now. <laughs> Hi Vivian and Alison, it's Nicola, uh, Creative Explorer on Instagram and on Ravelry. Just want to thank you both for a wonderful podcast. Love listening to you both. I often sit with my crochet or my knitting whilst listening to you. Um, I am a knitter and a crocheter. I was taught to knit as a child by my mum and like most children, fell out with it very quickly. Then when my children came along, I decided I wanted to knit them something and went to blankets. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but when I was knitting, there there wasn't YouTube. So it was a case of trial and error, winging it, hoping for the best. Um, But there were no tutorials, no yarn shops really that had sessions for you to go along and learn new things. So... I very quickly became bored of the knitting and the purling backwards and forwards. I wasn't confident enough to do the cables or colour work or anything like that. Whilst I was expecting my second child, I started a blanket. And it's still a work in progress and she is 16 years old. Uh, I haven't got the heart to throw it away. I look at it and think I will finish it one day. Maybe... When she produces a grandchild for me. (laughs) Hopefully not too soon from now. Um, But that was when I fell out with knitting. I hadn't knitted until recently after that. Um, 
I, after I had my children, I decided on a career change and I decided to train to become a midwife. So I went back to college and university and with a very young family, qualified as a midwife. And whilst working as a midwife, one of my colleagues um, was crocheting and I thought, wow, love that. Don't really think I was aware of crochet before then. It wasn't on my radar. Um, so I asked her to teach me and I've loved it ever since. Crocheted lots and lots of things. Have met lots of wonderful people via the internet and other means that are available now. I was adamant I wasn't a knitter, um, stuck with crochet. And then EYF 2017, I picked up some sock needles, courtesy of Catherine from Crafting and Treats, who'd got the sock knitting bug. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give that a try. And I've been knitting ever since. And now I alternate between knitting and crochet. And I thoroughly enjoy all of them, both of them. But um, I like the simplicity of crochet. And I don't mean that in the technique simple, it isn't. I like that I can put my crochet down and come back to it at any time, whether it's an hour, a day, a week, a month, and can carry on and know where I am in the pattern and not be worried about having dropped stitches or anything like that. Whereas with knitting, if you're in a pattern and you're in the middle of a row, I suppose if you're working in the round, it, it doesn't matter, but you can't have that distraction, especially if it's a complex thing. I think you've got young children who demand your attention for things very quickly. It's hard to focus on knitting unless it's mindless knitting and there's nothing wrong with that. So I do enjoy both, but I do think crochet is first and knitting second. My knitting is getting better. I do more than just backwards and forwards, knitting and purling now. Crafting to me is my tranquility. It's my relaxation. It's my peace at the end of a very stressful day. And yes, I do have a marvelous, wonderful, exciting job. It is the best job in the world, but sometimes it's the worst job in the world. And I, I do need to de-stress and that's my way of de-stressing. So thanks for keeping me entertained. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Nicola, for submitting that very lovely message. Um, I, I thought it was funny that, not funny, but that you kind of started with knitting, lost it, yeah, yeah. but then crochet has become your main thing. Because I feel like, I feel like that's uncommon. I feel like is it more common for people to maybe learn how to crochet because they're learning how to do like little dishcloths or stuff like that. And then they learn how to knit and somehow knitting is like the real craft. And so they become knitters and forget about crocheting. Or am I just making mm -hmm. that up in my head? Maybe I think. Well, I mean, for like for those of us that that have learned to crochet or knit as children, definitely crochet is easier for for little hands mm -hmm. than knitting. So you know, you would. I mean, for my experience, I picked up. Uh, I was able to knit. No, I was able to crochet well a lot easier as a kid. So I made a lot of, you know, those little chashkis and doodads that were very ugly, lots of granny squares. So <laughs> so that was like, you know, uh, that's just like very country-ish and just very, I don't know, Homely. homespun -y. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not into that anymore. And then I, I graduated to the knitting and then I just kind of stuck with the knitting. Even but though I think that's the the you know, people's perceptions of crocheting versus knitting, they perceive it as you graduate to knitting because yeah, yeah. they never get to the point where they learn about all the other things you can do with crochet other than the little mm -hmm. tchotchkes and homely things. Things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, it was very in interesting that she, she did the opposite. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. And one day we're rooting for you that you'll finish your blanket for your daughter. <laughs> Or your grandchild, I don't know. I mean, I yeah. feel your pain because I've that blanket took me 
a year. Granted, I mean, 16 years is quite a lot, but just that one blanket, I've already, I keep saying to Sam, if I ever make a blanket again, like, shoot you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I haven't done a blanket since um, I stopped crocheting. You crocheted a blanket. So I, blanket. I crocheted a blanket before you were born. Mm. I did a couple, maybe, um, because I didn't know what to do with it. I was just like crocheting, 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 crocheting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we'll 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 be excited for the cow cow to begin, and I'll have to I'll have to figure out what my next project is, my next whip, so that I can. Start yeah, I'm it thinking for mm, the maybe cow cow. I should start something. Maybe I should finish when I. Uh, oh, well, strategic see. thinking, like. <laughs> Probably you you could just like you could bang out like five hats. Is that two points? Five hats probably faster <laughs> than somebody could do a sweater. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I could make like a um um for for donations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, how many? There's not that many heads in the family. How many <laughs> hats can I make? <laughs> uh, well, speaking of cow cows, do you want to? talk about shop top because i know there's a bit of cow cowness in that yes keep calm and carry on is sponsored by our etsy shop i mean it's your etsy shop okay um <laughs> pearl and plum but you know you're you're the you're the pearl and i'm the plum anyway <laughs> we were recently um contacted by actually knitting that's michelle she asked if we would sponsor a prize in her knit along, which is a pal cow, and it's a podcast along knit along. So I have it. It's um like a lot of podcasters have Etsy shops or or whatnot, and so your your project has to somehow be related to a podcast. Like right. so, it's sort of a way it. to support podcasters, support other podcasters. Right. So, so most of the p- sponsors are other podcasts. So, we are donating a cute flamingo bag for the um, prize. For the prize, yes. And nice. then there is a coupon code. So, go on to her uh, Ravelry page to find the coupon code for this particular podcast. And her, what was her podcast called again? Actually knitting, Actually. or is it knitting? Actually. No, it's actually knitting. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually knitting. Uh, It's actually knitting. (laughs) But, you know, you can crochet too. It doesn't just have to be uh, knitting. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, Yarny bits and bobs? I know. Sure. I know you have some yarny bits and bobs. I do. I met up with Caroline of the Mind and Muse podcast and her hubby. At the Common Man in Concord, uh, it's uh, she was visiting family in Boston and her son in in New yeah, Hampshire, sure. and there was she had a free day and she messaged me and we met for lunch. It was so nice. It's so nice to have Just your saw her in friends. March. I know. Like, how crazy is that? <laughs> like she lives in Puerto Rico, you live in New Hampshire. You first met her in March in Scotland, and now you're seeing her again, <laughs> like, in in, in uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, so that was we had a lovely lunch, and they were actually impressed with my my restaurant choice. <laughs> Where they like they like their food. I mean, I would say we should meet halfway, and Concord is about halfway where her son lives and where we live. And I, you know, I I know that there is a yarn store, so it's perfect. There's a yarn store we can go <laughs> go look at yarn after we're done eating. And the only restaurant that I know that has parking is the Common Man because that's the only restaurant I've ever been to in Concord, other than. I don't know, like McDonald's or something like okay, that. Okay, but so, your yarn store. This is Yarn Bits and Bobs. Tell me about the yarn store. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Yarn Bits. So we went to, so I took her to the Elegant U, which is just up the road from the restaurant. And uh, Marcy Richardson is the owner. She was busy talking to a yarn rep. So that was like really Ooh. exciting. I was like looking over their shoulder, <laughs> looking at all the <laughs> stuff. But, but she did, you know, she, she did say hello to us. She was very friendly. I think it's her husband that was manning the, uh, the cash register. I'm not sure. I didn't ask. And, uh-huh. You know, sometimes I can get a little shy. But they have this this cute little dog. It's like the the store dog, but he he has to stay in the back and to to make him to keep him from going into the shop because yeah. he, he he lives in the back. Uh-huh. They just put up a cardboard like a flattened cardboard box <laughs> with a as flap he, up as if he couldn't what just knock that over. 
Yeah, but he's not a very do- big dog. He's like a one a of those very smart um, dog. <laughs> like <laughs> one of those, um, like one of those terriers. I don't know, uh-huh. one, you yeah. know those those little dogs. So he was very cute. <laughs> yeah. I bought some sock yarn. It's Regia Magic something or other. Um, I forgot. I didn't bring it because I'm in Philadelphia, and Caroline bought some uh, some yarns too. So we had we had a lovely time nice. perusing the shop. Yeah, yay for internet friends. Yay. <laughs> yes, yay for internet friends. I I right right now um, being in um, Pennsylvania or, or or outside of Philadelphia, I'm in, in King of Prussia. There is a, a sewing store. It's called Steve's Quilting sewing quilting and vacuum store what? and it's very yeah it's a very nondescript s- storefront but you go inside they actually had a lot of nice fabrics um they, they sell sewing machines and and vacuum cleaners yes and fabric what? so i bought <laughs> so i haven't decided whether or not this is going to be for the shop or for me but i did buy this cute uh squirrel fabric oh very cute and it's guess that, what that same mustardy color as the sheet fabric yeah. you bought last time it is. It's and it's also um, cotton and steel. Oh, well, it's probably and, is the exact same color. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and this cute little travel icon fabric. It's got yeah. um, Mexican sombrero. It's got coliseum. Uh, yes, the coliseum and Notre, Notre Dame, Dame and a pagoda. What Camel. else? A parrot. A big, big Ben. ben and hey. Empire State Building. What's uh, double decker. That- so it's really cute. It is cute. Is that uh, cotton steel as well? It is cotton Gotta steel. Gotta love them. <laughs> yeah. And then this is not cotton steel. This is probably just going to be as personal fabric, but I had to share it because it's so funny. It's just sewing machines. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but but rather specific Bernina sewing machines, <laughs> which is what I have. <laughs> and I thought it was just so funny. So I had to buy that. Um, so, yep. Um, and so that's all the yardy fibery uh, bits and bobbies that mm. I've been doing. I have some bits and bobs. Sam's parents were here this past weekend for a long weekend. And she was originally going to bring something for me, but she ended up mailing it instead because she didn't want it to be confiscated at the airport. Uh, she had all of these crochet hooks. Um, I don't know if they belong uh. to somebody's mother a grandparent or something but so she had a bunch so she's like you want them and i said yeah why not so i think they're bone and they range in sizes they obviously they don't have any sort of labeling or anything the biggest one is maybe five and a half and the smallest one is tiny it's it looks very delicate like two millimeters oh my gosh it's very very small i probably will never That's use like it s- sock yarn right <laughs> i don't I, I don't even know wait the the actual hook itself is so i don't know if it's been worn it's down so it delicate. doesn't it doesn't really look like it would like it the looks like the anything? yarn would just yeah slip out of the actual hook bit oh. um but th- they're very cool at the very least uh-huh. um but a few of them were also definitely lace hooks uh-huh. so the sizing is different so this is a i think the smallest one is a, a four and a half but it it looks minuscule, and oh, I definitely gosh. will never use this. Is that metal, or so, is yeah? It so a... it's it's metal, and I think this this one has a bone handle, and it's metal, uh-huh. and it's it's so small it looks lethal because it looks like you could just like puncture someone's skin right with it, like or just like jab their eye out. It's like <laughs> it's like a a needle. It's so so tiny, uh-huh. and so the the other ones um actually have are just metal, and have little covers. Oh, nice. Because they're so delicate, you could bend them very easily. Yeah, and they really are, you know, if you just went... You know what they look like? They just look like like the the, the little ones that they sell at the the fabric store to to repair your your knit fabrics. Mm. They sell those. Like, they're tiny, tiny little hooks. Yeah, they're crazy tiny. But yeah, these metal ones say, made in England. I can't... It's a bit rusted or something, so I can't see what the brand is. But... Yeah, so that was cool. Uh, so they were here because, well, to visit us, but we also planned a trip to the Inner Hebrides. Ooh, we so had, cool. Yeah, so we, we, I took the Friday off and we drove via Inverary. We had very quick, very, very quick pit stop in Inverary. Um, there's a really nice 
like fancy castle-y looking thing, which we just sort of drove by. And then we drove to Oban, which seemed like a nice little uh, seaside town. It's not a city, is it? Town. Village? Yeah. Um, no, no, it's a town. Um, so Because that's where we were getting the ferry to the Isle of Mull. Uh-huh. Uh, and we only just managed to get onto the ferry. We, we, <laughs> missed, we missed the check-in time by four minutes. And then oh, the man no. was said, oh, you're going to have to go on the standby lane. So we drove the car into the standby lane and we didn't think we were going to make it. And then we we were literally, we were the last car in and the little, the little what is this, the little door thing that came up, the gate, yeah, at the back of the ferry just went boop, yeah, right behind our car. You. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so we just made it to the ferry and it was a very, very pleasant journey, like a 50 minute uh, ferry to the Isle of Mo. And once we got there, we were warned by the Airbnb we were staying at that the the trip from the the ferry the stop terminal nope uh-huh. what, what's the word I'm looking for the dock the yeah the know. pier whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it at, so the the trip from there to the Airbnb was mostly on a single track road oh. the whole trip the whole trip it was just a, the one single lane with many passing places for cars coming in the opposite direction uh so luckily sam being the country boy that he is has lots of experience with that and we made it just fine and but even the last three miles or two miles to get to the airbnb was just down a farm track it was just Uh rocks it was very Uh, jostly but it was very uh, pretty it was you know did you get car sick no, no, I, I was fine. Um, uh-huh. But, you know, it was very green, and you could see the sea, and there was lots and lots and lots of sheep, and uh. it was, you know, there was hardly, you know, there's no civilization. You know, you see the, the random white houses, uh-huh. or, or, you know, across the water and, and all that. Uh-huh. And um, the the place we were staying at is, you know, it, it has a name. It's called Skor. It has a population of zero. Because the only cottages <laughs> there are holiday lets, um, ah, but I, see. I think they had some like books about it. And in the seventeen whatever census, there was maybe forty nine people living there or something like that. Really? Um, but yeah, so it was it was very remote, but it was very pretty. And then we did a boat trip to Staffa, which has the basalt columns like uh-huh. um the giant's causeway in ireland and of course us being harry potter fans you would know it mostly from the scene in the deathly hallows movie where they're uh-huh. just they're just apparating to different locations to and yeah, yeah. one of the scenes uh-huh. they show is there at the giant's causeway so the legend being that the giant's causeway stretched from ireland to scotland uh-huh. and so staffa is the scottish side of the giant's causeway um so we saw that that was really incredible and and puffins there, it's oh a, it's you did did you take any pictures ground. yeah we took pictures I'll, I'll pop some in the show notes of, in the in the video and it, it was it was really cool apparently they spend most of their lives on the water but they come to land to breed so uh-huh. we could catch them during the breeding time so we just there was you know everyone in the boat was pretty much just sat on the grass um sort of uh there's a cliff sort of down to the water and you could see Mm -hmm. the puffins chilling out in the water and there were some people on a boat who were like trying to paddle close to them but of course every time they paddle close to them the puffins (laughs) would fly away but that meant they were flying away back up the cliff to their burrows where we were sat and Uh. the the tour got the tour the boat person man was saying how the puffins really aren't too bothered by people because um they know that if there are people around, the bigger birds that eat them will stay away. Ah. Uh, so the puffins. Bigger birds not eat the people that eat the No, they'll the puffins. eat the puffins. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. So we got some, we got pretty close to the puffins. And they're oh, so nice. small and they're so cute. And their beaks yeah. are really cool. Uh, I didn't know that I love puffins, but I love puffins. They're just so cute. <laughs> So that was really cool. And then, so we also saw dolphins on the boat. Yeah. And then we stopped at Iona on the way back, uh, which is a 
very very small island we didn't we didn't do much we were pretty really? tired by then but i did manage to stop inside the iona craft shop which they're the ones that <laughs> yes, do the did. yeah they do the uh uh-huh. the iona wool i didn't buy any wool though because uh-huh. i still i still even have oh, some from my first batch uh-huh. and i know that i can always just order online if i want more uh-huh. so but yeah it was a very nice trip and there was i i i uh took lots of pictures of sheep <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Oh, I'm so jealous. Well, I think we'll say goodbye. Bye. Well, no, I've got to go do my thing first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find our show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com, as well as all the information for the Cal Cal. Um, you can follow our Instagram at KCACY Podcast, and that's our sort of podcast Instagram. My personal Instagram is Allison here, and my mom's is Upstate, Upstate underscore, underscore Viv. Viv. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment, whatever, on whatever platform you listen to us on, whether that be iTunes or YouTube or any of the other very many places you can find our podcast, like overcast anchor spotify all the things and okay. our technical difficulties from the last episode are fixed so you can find us on itunes again which yay is good. yes so good. thank you for listening and remember to keep calm and carry on